Good morning. Most of you probably don't recognize me because most weeks I get to work with the beautiful high schoolers. <laughs> so very rarely do I get to come over to the service. It's been my pleasure and my honor to work again this year with the VUU high schoolers. They're a group, yes it has, <laughs> They're a group of thoughtful individuals who don't shy away from a lively discussion about anything, be it politics, race relations, sexuality, or gender identification. I love that about them. I learn quite a bit each week that I spend with them. It has increased my own spirituality and my patience. I have learned that I was a ladder person. What does that mean? I stand on my rung. That means that there's someone above me and there's someone below me. And it's very difficult for someone to stand on that rung with me. This year in class for our curriculum, we watched a series by Morgan Spurlock called 30 Days. What that was, was someone who held a specific belief had to live with someone with the opposite belief for 30 days. For example, we watched a hunter who believed strongly in hunting, eating meat, wearing fur, had to live with PETA activists. Um, yes, sometimes it was quite funny. Um, after 30 days, usually the person who went into the experience left with a better understanding and hopefully more empathy for the other point of view. They had, after all, walked in someone else's shoes for 30 days. That's not easy. Not something we all volunteer to do. Watching this series opened up all our minds, I think. What I like about these young people, these young adults, is that they have very strong opinions. And they often think that their opinions are the right opinions. They understood that they needed to learn empathy about opposite points of view and to understand that walking in someone else's shoes can open their minds. It gave us humility, which helps you learn and understand. And it allowed me to climb down my ladder, right? And join into the circle of human fellowship where there is no one better than me and no one below me, but instead where we are all equals. today. Um, okay. Uh, Rebecca actually brought up a really important phrase, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, I've been told all my life to put myself in someone else's shoes, and for as long as I can remember, I've been hearing it from friends, family, mentors, television, book, radio, basically all over the place. And so you think that you may be putting yourself in someone else's shoes, but you never really know what it's like. I thought I did, but it wasn't until recently that I really found out what it was like to do that. Um, I knew that I could listen to people and feel empathy for what they were going through, but I never fully grasped what their story and their lifestyle was like. As Rebecca said, 30 days is about people taking themselves out of their comfort zones and putting aside their beliefs to see what it's like on the opposite side of their viewpoints. Whether it be a man who believes in traditional marriage living with a gay man in San Francisco, or a couple trying to live off of only minimum wage, or a man going to live on a Native American reservation, these people were willing to see how the other half lives and that 
really inspired me. Since watching the show, it has shown me how easy it is to generalize and simply assume how someone else who believes in something that we don't agree with lives, even though they are a totally different person aside from their viewpoints. For example, since becoming UU, um, I found myself having to explain my beliefs more and more. I'm sure we've all had to do that. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost where it was. There we go. Um, and while some people don't really understand, you know, what our religion is like, and they don't want to hear our hippy-dippy religion, um, <laughs> I've actually had someone call that to me. <laughs> I've met some really wonderful, open-minded people who aren't necessarily UU, but they understand our beliefs. I have talked to atheists, I've talked to Christians, I've talked to Mormons, and they're all more than happy to discuss with me our different viewpoints and where we also overlap. And in return, it's caused me to become more curious about their ideals and beliefs. Uh, you feel valued, not, but not just as a person, as someone you know, who believes in this religion so strongly, and you feel good inside because you know that someone is listening to you and they care about what you're saying. And if someone can give you that feeling, try to pass it on to other people because if it makes you feel good inside, could you imagine how wonderful it makes someone else feel? You know, just try to really honestly Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Thank you. I really enjoyed seeing all of the different intricacies of an issue through the 30 Days episodes. For example, one of the episodes featured Morgan Spurlock and his wife trying to live on minimum wage. My assumption coming into the episode was that although it is terrible that minimum wage isn't a living wage, people living on minimum wage should try to save money as much as possible. So when Morgan's niece and nephew came to spend time with them during the 30-day experiment, I was somewhat distressed when Morgan splurged on treats in a movie for the kids. What was he doing? He had just used a library to find entertainment for the kids. Couldn't he just take the kids to the library as entertainment? <laughs> However, my real understanding of what was happening occurred when we began discussing the episode. I came to understand that it could be really difficult to deny children something or to reveal the family's economic troubles. The need to give children the same experience as other kids is just as prevalent as the need to save for many fam families. I gained a greater compassion for and understanding of the real families living on minimum wage. After a walk in their shoes, I realized that only the individuals going through a situation can make these decisions for themselves. Uh, good morning. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about the more general subject of open-mindedness. Um, many people strive for open-mindedness. It has become an important characteristic in job interviews and personal betterment. Benefits of being open-minded include letting go of control and making yourself vulnerable, experiencing changes, strengthening yourself, and gaining confidence. In this world, some people do not understand how you can have strong beliefs and opinions and be open-minded. I like to think of it like ordering food at a restaurant. We all have those places that we eat the same thing no matter what. Uh, I'm guilty of this. McDonald's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if you never break away from your usual, you're being closed-minded. But when you try something new, you're being open-minded. No one said you have to like it, but at least you tried it. So the challenge for this week is to go to one of those restaurants where everyone knows your usual and order something new. Well, some of these amazing folks are about to symbolically cross the bridge this morning into young adulthood, a time-honored tradition in Unitarian Universalism. 
We're grateful for your spirit, for your intelligence, for your willingness to discuss tough issues. Can we give the high school class just one more? <laughs> this special occasion has me thinking about bridges this week in general. It's wise, you know, to pay attention when you're driving across a bridge. There's one bridge in particular that I've crossed several times in the last four years that has jarred me awake more than once. To find this little bridge, you wind your way east of the city, along the Apache Trail, through the curves that wind serpentine and around and through the Superstition Mountains. After some time, you see on your right gorgeous blue water from way up high. There's a pull-off where you can stop and admire the view. After that, for a few miles, you're descending toward Canyon Lake. And the curves on the descent, while they can be tight, hairy if you're passing someone pulling a boat or a camper, they can also combine with the unmatched scenery to lull you into a state of serenity. And when you get to the water, you come to this little bridge. One of those bridges that's not solid on the bottom. The floor of the bridge is an iron grid through which you can see the water underneath. Two cars can make it through if you don't have your arm hanging out the window, (laughs) but it's best not to try it. Most of us stop and let the other car through alone. It's a little tenuous in a car, but try it on a motorcycle sometime. (laughs) The metal grid does something to the tires of a bike that make it feel like you're riding on ice, that... At any moment, the machine can slide out from under you, though that's probably not really true. So my muscles tense and my breath is shorter until the bridge is in the mirrors. It is thrilling to me and scary as heck. And it's worth every second of that because beyond that bridge is some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen. And some pretty good fishing, too. I'm not telling you where. (laughs) Bridges can be risky. There's no doubt about that. They require us to pay attention, to shake ourselves out of the unconscious rhythms in the road before and behave in new ways. One thing is for sure, once you're on the bridge, there's no turning around. Truly, bridges can shake us awake. But a bridge isn't just a connection point between two places. There's living to do. There's fun to be had. There are things to be learned and awakened to in these places of connection. In our lives, we cross bridge after bridge after bridge. From our teen years into young adulthood, from young adulthood into middle age, from the world of the well, with its all too often taken for granted freedoms, to the world of illness, hospitals and rehab centers and the like, Many cross that bridge more than once. We cross the bridge from mourning to dancing, from anger to reconciliation. And eventually and often too soon, we cross the bridge from life to death, the bridge that in many ways gives the others their shapes. It's no wonder that once we've crossed a few bridges, many of us are tempted to find something Anything to grasp onto, something that isn't moving, something for God's sake that won't change. But friends, though we try our best to blame change on the world around us, truth is we're all moving and we can't stop. The bridges, these landmarks of life, only remind us what has always been true. We're going forward. We're heading somewhere. Bridges ask us, are you headed where you want to be headed. That's why one of the most important jobs of religious traditions like ours is to stand at the entry to bridges and call one another to attention. Baby naming ceremonies, bridging ceremonies, (laughs) weddings, memorial services, all of these are ways of saying you are crossing a bridge. Slow down. Focus on this moment. Learn all of its lessons. You will be different after this crossing. We do these ceremonies in community as a way of saying we're here to witness and to companion one another through all of these changes. 
across all of these bridges. To those who today cross the bridge into young adulthood, we know this is a thrilling, and if it hasn't been yet, it might be frightening, and wonderful time in your life. Your identity is shifting. But look around you at some point this morning. See all the experience and love in this community. It's here for you. As is Unitarian Universalism there for you, wherever you go. That is what this ceremony is intended to remind us of. So, Marcy, let's do this. Will our bridging youth please come stand on this side of our bridge? And any of the young adults we have in our community, would you come stand on the far side of the bridge to receive our youth, please? Our middle school group has joined us. If you guys want to find a seat, you're welcome to come in. We stand here today to honor the transition of our soon-to-be newest young adults. These youth have had the opportunity that only one in ten Unitarian Universalists have, to have the unique and valuable experience of being a UU youth. We nurtured these individuals. I can never make it through this. <laughs> As they grew from childhood to young adulthood, we have welcomed them as they discovered Unitarian Universalism, and we have benefited from their presence in our community. As you stand on the bridge between youth and adulthood, know that we cherish the energy that you bring to every facet of Unitarian Universalism. We hope you remain active in the UU world. Maybe you'll be part of a congregation, this one or another. Or maybe you'll live in one of our housing co-ops, like the Lucy Stone Cooperative in Boston. Maybe you'll be a member of the online Church of the Larger Fellowship, or stay active through our camping ministries or our campus ministries, or maybe all of those. However you stay involved, take heart, even if the communities aren't everything you hoped they would be in the beginning. It's easy to find the flaws when we gather in community. The trick is staying around, working with one another to make things better. Your participation will improve our shared ministry. Community is essential if we are to create the world we dream about. You have things to teach us. Share them. Others in your communities have things to teach you. Receive them. I'm going to ask the young adults to recite their covenant. There we go. If you can read it. We appreciate the gifts you bring to our community. As you cross this bridge, we pledge our support as we reach for your dreams and continue to grow to discover your dreams yourself. I'm going to invite each of our bridging youth to come forward and um, share a statement with you. I have enjoyed the community here at VUU during my junior and senior years of high school, and I will be studying liberal arts at Soka University of America in the fall. Hello, my name is Lexi Garibrandt, uh, and I'm finishing up my last week at Perry High School. In the fall, I will be attending the Honors College of U of A. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have my teachers at school to thank for that. And I have my teachers here, <laughs> and mentors, friends, and every person in this room <sighs> to thank for turning me into the person I want to be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've enjoyed uh, getting to know the teen group on Sunday mornings and at movie club, 
and Owl coming of age in Boston. And I've enjoyed the adult parts of this congregation too, like being at the service or speaking in the sermon and fun events like the sock hop last night. <laughs> um, so I just, I want to thank you all for the last four years. And although Tucson isn't that far away, any distance that's too far to come visit regularly every Sunday is too far. <laughs> Hello, my name is Riley Greer. I am a senior for two more days at Highland High School. Um, in the fall, I'll be attending the Colorado School of Mines for Environmental Engineering. <laughs> All right. My family has been coming to Valley U since I was a little girl, and it was always my sister and I who dragged our mom to church on Sunday mornings. <laughs> I was six years old, but even then I felt a special connection to this place. Back then it was probably just playtime with my friends, but as I've matured, so has my view on Unitarian Universalism. Our seven principles are always at the front of my mind when I make a decision, and they have shaped me into the person I am today. As I move on to college, I know that Valley UU will always have a special place in my heart, and I hope that one day my life's path will bring me back. I would like to give a special shout out to Marcy here. She's helped me grow so much and been an amazing mentor. And also someone who's not here, Bill Palka, shaped me into who I am today. And I just wish he could be here for this moment. <laughs> It's really hard to walk in heels on this stage. Um, so take my hand in friendship I give to you this day. Remember all the good times we had along the way. Take my hand in helping other people that we know. The more we give to others, the more that we will grow. So take my hands in learning to learn to camp on this nature's ground, enjoying trails and campfires with new friends that we have found. So take my hand in giving our knowledge of true principles to people we meet and talk to, We'll have many doubts, so take my hand in thinking and thanking our minister and our teachers with sincere appreciation for standing by our side. So take my hand in eagerness to be an adult. We're proud to be bridging. It's remarkable in how much the church places an importance on this process. It gives hope for that's what's on the other side of that bridge is going to bring more amazing things to help me thrive. So take my hand to follow new journeys and paths in sight. And I'll be going to MCC in the fall. Hello, I am Marie Catherine Smith. Um, my story with Unitarian Universalism isn't like a lot of people my ages. Um, I didn't come into the UU community until I was 15, um, but I really wish I'd come a lot sooner because since then I have met so many amazing people amongst you and the whole Pacific Southwest District and the entire UU community across the nation. It's been absolutely wonderful and I've gone through so many experiences that I wouldn't change for the world. Like, you know, the classes that we've had in youth group, the coming of age program last summer, and I've been blessed to teach the not only preschool class, but also the kindergarten first grade class who are some of the most intelligent children I have ever met. <laughs> and all of these things have not only helped me become a UU, but just a better person in general. And next year, I will be attending ASU with a full scholarship to major in early childhood education. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, I'm trying to keep my speech short, and I would love to thank, like, all of you. But I am going to thank one person in particular, and that person is Marcy. Marcy. Oh, here. 
I'm trying to think of how to do this. Marcy, you have helped me, you've guided me, you've taught me, you've been my friend when I've needed one the most, and you've been a mentor to me for these past two and a half years, and I wouldn't, oh, sorry, trying, okay. And I want to thank you and tell you how much I love you, and I'm going to miss having class with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I would also like to thank everyone else here. You all have conversed with me, you've taught me, you've helped me, like I said, you've helped me become a better person, and I will take all the lessons that you guys have taught me into the future. So thank you all, and I love and appreciate every single one of you. Good morning. My name is Maddie Vandekar. I am graduating from Desert Hills High School in five days. Um, <laughs> in the fall, I'll be starting at MCC and carrying over two years from then to ASU to pursue my electrical engineering degree. Today, I brought a poem to share. A little egg under her mother's wings, yet to be born into the world of things. A crack and a pop, she came out. Old and new, it was all the same. Well nourished by mom, she began to sing, ready to learn of life and everything. In instance of new, she started up her flaps, not knowing life and all its traps. Mother, wa mother watched on with a big chuckle as she sprang out the nest without, with no buckle. Back and forth she swayed on the ground. Her, mo her mother watched for, for danger all around. She tried and tried until that day. Fly she did, but not with grace. The day came like mother knew it would for her child to fly away like she did. Off towards the horizon, f flying, wait, filling she went. Mother watched from afar, knowing it was time well spent. Many times the hailstorms of life beat her down, sometimes in flight, all the way to the ground. Lessons well learned, she still lost her way, fluttered home to mom with nothing to say. Under mother's wings, once more, did she heal that grace of mothers no one can steal. By grace did she heal down to the, care, to the core, ready to take its life and challenge, its, ready to take life and challenges once more. She flew from the, the tree, mom, prompt, mom proud to see. She became the strongest sparrow the cloud could ever see. The eagles bowed down, had nothing on her, by the way. She flew, glided in good, did she soar that day. As me and my colleagues bridge today and take flight into the next stages of our lives, one thing we must remember is home is always an option, whether it be our parents, our church, our friends, or any other distant family. No matter where we are, there will always be arms to catch us when you slip, pick you back up, and allow you to fly again. Thank you. I would like to invite you as a congregation to please read the next slide. The words are, oh, they're very small. I hope you can read them. I apologize. We welcome you as young adults into our community of love, service, and justice. We promise to respect you, to honor you in your uniqueness, and to walk together beside you as you continue your spiritual journey. We pledge this to one another, to be in community and accept all the blessings and responsibility that brings us.